Welcome to Informatica Global Customer Support's Multimedia KB session. My name is Vimal and in this topic I am going to discuss how to configure Squirrel JDBC client and query a SQL data service. In this topic we are going to discuss where to download the JDBC ODBC bridge driver from and where to download and configure the Squirrel JDBC client and how to create a connection in Squirrel client and connect to the SQL data service and query it to return the data. You can raise a shipping request SR with Informatica and request the shipping team to send you the installer files for the JDBC ODBC bridge driver. And the Squirrel client can be downloaded from the listed URL directory. The very so when you unzip the JDBC ODBC bridge driver, there will be a JDBC driver within that folder which we need to copy and place it into the Squirrel client's installation directory. We need to do this so that the Squirrel client can pick up that JDBC driver and connect to the SQL data service URL. So now let's begin with the demo. So let me show you how the JDBC ODBC bridge driver looks like when it's unzipped. So when, when the file is provided, it will be named as generally as IDS95.zip or IDS951.zip. For the purpose of this demo, I'm using a 9.5 JDBC driver. So when you unzip the IDS95.zip directory and go into it you'll see a folder called JDBC space ODBC in that if you go there will be all the JDBC drivers listed for all the operating systems we are specifically interested about the win32-x86.zip file go ahead and unzip that and I have already unzipped here and within that there will be another folder called source and within that there will be another folder called JDBC DRV Within that folder, there's the J JDBC driver called infardsjdbc.jar. We need to copy this jar file into the Squirrel client's installation directory slash lib directory. So now let's go ahead and open the Squirrel client's installation directory. So I have already downloaded the Squirrel client from the mentioned SourceForge URL and it was a .gc file. I've gone ahead and unzipped it, untarred it and this is the directory structure that I have. So here within the Squirrel client's installation directory there is the lib directory and if I and I've gone ahead and copied the dsjdbc.jar file here. So now we can invoke the squirrel-sql.bat and invoke the squirrel client GUI. So in, uh, invoking the squirrel-sql.bat file opens up the squirrel SQL client version 3.4.0 which is the version that I'm using right now. And now the very first thing that we need to do is register the driver. So I'm clicking on the drivers tab on the left hand side and click on the plus which means create a new driver. So here I'm going to name the driver as infra driver and we can choose the infra ds dot jar file from the list of files here drivers here sorry and having selected the driver now we need to populate the example URL and the class name. So let's proceed with populating the class name parameter. So that's the class name for the driver. I've listed the class name and the example URL in the PPT also for better clarity. So the class name is com.informatica.ds.sql.jdbcdrv.infadriver. So the example URL is the syntax of the JDBC URL from with which we are going to connect to the SQL data service. So let's go ahead and populate that also with the example URL also and the website URL is also the same. And then again this is mentioned in the C uh, PPT which I will be going through again for better clarity. So now let's go ahead and click OK and we see that the infra driver has been registered successfully. 
Now click on the aliases tab which is the connections and let's go ahead and create a connection so that we can um, connect to the SQL data service. So I'm just going to call this as SQL test, SQL DS test and from the drop down choose the infer driver. Provide the username and password that you use to connect to the SQL data service. So and this URL parameter now needs to be populated with the JDBC URL with which you connect to that SQL data service. So now I'm going to log into my administration console and go to the data integration services application type tab to find what the SQL data service URL is. As you can see, I've logged into my admin console, highlighted the data integration service and underneath the applications tab, uh, the application is displayed, highlight the SQL data service and I can find the JDBC URL here. Copy the JDBC URL and switch back to the Squirrel client and paste the URL here and click on test to confirm if the connectivity is successful. Clicking on test button brings up this new connect to SQL DS window click on connect and check it says connection is successful click OK and click OK and say connect again so clicking on connect again now logs you in now you are connected to the SQL data service and underneath the SQL tab let's go ahead and execute the query against the virtual table for the deployed application SQL data service so I have executed the query and I see that the data has been returned successfully as ID1 and ID2 columns with the data 1, 2. So now we have successfully completed logging into the, uh, to the SQL client, configured it, we've connected to the SQL data service and also we've retrieved the data. Now returning back to the presentation, um, the example URL to be provided in the Squirrel client is listed here. So you can build the original URL, you can copy it from the application tab in the SQL data service also. And uh, But this is the example URL that I provide used in the Squirrel client. And the class name is also mentioned here. And you can also refer to the KB112374 for the text KB where all the same steps are listed out. So that brings us to the end of the session. Um, we would love to hear back from you and I hope you found this session useful. Thank you.